this. Amen. Thank God for saving us. Can you say amen? Uh, appreciate musicians, singers, ushers, cleaners, media team, sound team, nursery workers, everyone. A lot of people go a lot of hard work to make the church run efficiently. We do appreciate all your help. If you have your Bibles, we are going to turn to Judges chapter 16. Judges, we're going to read, start reading from verse 25. Judges 16, 25. Now, there's been a few rugby games here in Auckland and around New Zealand recently. I asked Tammy how her, her Fijian Warriors went last night. She wasn't too happy, but lucky it's her birthday today and she had Maccas, so she's going to be all right. And um, another sport that, as you know, I follow is, is soccer. And one of the greatest soccer players to ever play, his name is Diego Maradona. And you might have heard of the name Maradona before. I'm not, I'm not sure how well he is known over here. But he's one of the best players to ever live, if not the greatest. And he's like a god over there in Argentina. And like his name is just like one of the, the best names he he led them to a World Cup win, um, and I uh, can't remember, like 50 years ago or something. It's just incredible uh, reverence and love for this guy. And he was super fast, he was super agile. Uh, no one could really defend him. He was powerful, he could score, he had balance, he had everything. He won the golden boot, which means he scored the most goals. Uh, all these uh, blessings upon his life, and he was the best there was. And after he retired, uh, he stopped training. Ever seen somebody when they were fit and training and then they retire for a while and then you see him a couple of years later? They, they look a little bit different. You know, he lacked in some dominion and he started enjoying some life. And I think I've got a photo of him, his before and after photos. Um, just a little bit different. I don't know if he's auditioning for like Santa Claus or something on the, on the right hand side, but the greatest soccer player to ever live. And he turned out like this. And if, if you gave him a soccer ball, oh, he just passed away recently, but if you gave him a soccer ball at that at that weight level, he is not going to do too much. And the reason I put that up is because we, we laugh about that physically. We have a bit of a joke. But how many times that has been our life spiritually? At one point, on top of the world. At one point, strong, victorious, powerful, dominion, authority, in, the, in step with the plans of God. But then over time, our spiritual level can turn to the other side. And we're no longer where we once were. How many felt like that spiritually? You say amen. You can put that photo down. Thank you. So in our text, we're going to read about the strongest man ever. We know his name is Samson. You can maybe turn those heaters off. That's just hitting me. It's, very, it's quite hot up here. If it's cold out there, you can leave them on. Um, but his life didn't go according to plan. He once had strength, but we understand how it came to weakness. So the sermon title tonight is, God, will you meet with me again? And no matter what you've gone through, and no matter how far away from God you are tonight, God wants to meet with you again. God wants to meet with you more than he did the first time. That moment that you had with God when you first got saved or when you were totally dedicated to God, and you remember that feeling on top of the world, God wants to meet with you, with you again. So let's read Judges 16. This is the end of Samson's life, from verse 25. It says, so it happened when their hearts were merry. This is the enemy the Philistines, that they said, call for Samson and they, that he may perform for us. So they called for Samson from the prison and he performed for them. And they stationed him between the pillars. And Samson said to the lad who led him by the hand, let, let me feel the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. Now the temple was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, about 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. Samson called to the Lord saying, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once, O oh God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple and he braced himself against them, one on the right and the other on his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might and the temple fell on the Lord's and all the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed at his death were more than he killed in his life. Amen. Let's pray. God, we're asking that you would meet with us again tonight. God, you see that our hearts have wandered away from you, that we've drifted, that we're no longer the same. And I pray, God, just as you met with Samson, God, meet with us again. God, let there be a fresh anointing on the word of God this evening. 
strengthen your church for a last day's revival, God. We thank you for what you're doing. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody says, two points tonight. First, you want to look at performing from prison. Samson's a special type of person. He's just in the announcement of his birth, he, um, his mother is barren. Um, she can't have children. An angel comes out of heaven, announces that he's going to, it's actually Jesus in the Old Testament, and announces his birth. It's, it's quite powerful. Isaac's birth was announced by an angel. Jesus' birth was announced by an angel. But no other person's birth was announced by an angel. This, this guy is special. There's something different about him. He was chosen to judge Israel. That means lead Israel. These are the leaders. These are the, the warriors of the time. And what a privilege to lead God's people. And understand his strength. This is what he's best known for, that Samson was a strong man at certain times. Judges 14, 5 and 6 talks about the first time he discovered his strength. So Samson went down to Timnah with his, with his father and mother, and he came to the vineyards of Timnah. Now to his surprise, the young lion came roaring against him, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand, yet he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done. There's a lion attacks him and he just tears it apart. Now a lion in the New Testament would be a picture of the devil's, devil's attack. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And all of us know the lion's voice. All of us know when the lion attacks. Ever been going through your Christian walk and then bam, something comes up. There's an attack from family. There's an attack at work. There's an attack on your health. There's an attack on relationships. There's a spiritual attack on your mind. And the lion comes and he comes and he attacks. But for Samson, he just threw it off like it was nothing. It, it was no big deal to him. And all of us, I believe, have felt that strength before. Maybe it was when you first got saved, you were a new convert, and you just got rid of everything from the past. You got the alcohol, poured it down the sink. You stopped hanging out with those people. Immediately. It was just a stop. I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. No filter. 100%. One way Jesus. That's it. There is no turning back. Gave up the old lifestyle. And when you were a new convert, you felt the fire of God. And then there was an attack from the enemy just to try and get you to drink or something. You're like, tear it apart like a, like, a, like a little goat. It's nothing, man. Devil won't get me this time. The old girlfriend calls up, whatever it is, trying to get your attention. Nah, nah. I've got it. We've all felt that strength. Or maybe when you're a disciple, once you got saved and you slowly grew, then you understood discipleship and you made a stand, I'm going to be a disciple. I'm going to get involved in ministry and evangelism. I'm going to be available for the things of God. And there was a power that came from you had strength. And not only is enough strength for you, but you had strength for others. You helped others. You were a blessing to others. You encouraged others. You were supportive of others. And you were a true warrior of Christ. You were a soldier of Christ. And there was a strength that came over your life. You were able to fight temptations and fight excuses and fight limitations and fight weaknesses. There was something upon your life that there was a dominion, there was a strength. Normally take everybody else down, but you had a strength. You had a power that only comes from God. You had a strength that stopped you from quitting Quitting wasn't even in your vocabulary. When, when you quit, you'd laugh, joke, uh, quit. What do you mean quit? There's no such thing as quit. Slow down. You know, when people told you, maybe you're a bit too full on for God, and you're like, well, I was full on for the devil, so I might as well be full on for God, right? And we had this power. But in our text, there's something about Samson that appeals to us, but yet at the same time appalls us. There's something that attracts us to Samson, but there's something that, that just pushes us away. I want to be like Samson in strength, but I don't want to be like him in life. There's something about him that's appealing. I want to have strength to tear apart the lions of life, but I don't want to end up how he ended up. We all know the strength of Samson, but we can also know the sorrow of Samson. Maybe you felt that strength, but you've also felt the sorrow. And we know what happened. He doesn't stay strong, right? He finds a girl. He played her. She played him. He was undisciplined. Remember? Remember? When you're undisciplined or lazy, it turns you into a slave, right? Look what happens. We know the story of Delilah, Judges 16, 18. When Delilah saw that he had told her all in his heart, he sent and called, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. Now the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money 
in her hand and she lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him. I just tell you, you muck around with chicks, you get tormented. You get tormented hard. And his strength left him. Bible says don't give your strength to a woman because when you fornicate you become weak and here is Samson the strongest man ever that says in verse 20 she said the Philistines are upon you Samson so he awoke from his sleep and said I will go out as before at other times I will shake myself free but he did not know that the Lord had departed from him and the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza they bound him with bronze chains became a, a grinder in the prison. There's so much in there. You know, when you, when you muck around in sin and you, you fall back, your eyes get plucked out. You have no vision. You just make stupid choices and you don't care because you can't see the future. And then you're in chains. Even if you wanted to break free, you can't. He's a prisoner. This is Samson's life now. So a couple of things. Number one, he became a performer. All he did now was perform. He used to be a warrior. Now he's a performer. Look at verse 25. So it happened when their hearts were merry that they said, call for Samson that he may perform for us. Have you ever felt that your life is just a performance? That it's not a reality? That you're just going through the motions? You've lost that desire for God, that thirst, that relationship with God, and it's just a performance on a stage, man. And we're just going through the motions. You just ever felt like you're just pleasing other people? There's no relationship now. And this is... Samson's trying to please people that don't even like him. And how many of us have been there trying to please people that we know don't love us? And then turn our backs on people that we know that love us. He became a performer. Number two, he lived in prison. It says, so they called for Samson from the prison and he performed for them. You know, when you're away from God and weak, you feel in your mind and in your heart that you're in a prison, that you can't move forward, that there's no future. That life is dark, life is alone, life is isolated. And we feel like we're just a prisoner in the, de- in the devil's game. Third thing is that he was positioned. It says, it continues on in our text, that they stationed him between the pillars. That word station, they positioned him. They put him in a position that he didn't want to be in. Ever felt like your life is in a position that you don't want to be in? I shouldn't be here. I'm not talking physically, it might be physically, but you should be, this is not my life. I didn't choose to be in this situation. I didn't choose to be in this arena. I I didn't choose to have this battle. I shouldn't be here. There's there's a battle taking place on my mind and it's attacking me. There are times in life you're, you're stuck in positions you didn't choose. You could be in a position in your marriage that you never expected. You could be in a position in your ministry that you never expected or your walk with God or your relationships or your mind. You never, I never expected me to be like this or in this situation. Number four, he was powerless. No power left for Samson. Look at verse 26. And Samson said to the lad who held him by the hand, let me, let me feel the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. You know, once Samson was a picture of strength, now he's a picture of weakness. He needs to lean on other people. Once people lent on him, now he needs to lean on others to stand strong. I was talking with someone uh, recently, and they said, I I just feel like I'm hanging on by a thread. Have you ever felt that weak, that if one more thing happens, I don't know if I can go on. And he's, he's in this powerless state. Used to be strong. They used to fear him. Now he's powerless. And finally, he was played. It says in verse 27 that the temple was full of men and women and the lords of the Philistines were there, about 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. They're watching and they're just playing him like he's a big joke. Those areas that you had dominion in now have dominion over you. The Philistines would freak out when they saw Samson before. Now they see him and they play him. All his dominion is gone. They used, to, they used to cry from him, now they laugh at him. Ever felt that? Those areas that you had dominion in, now they're fighting back at you? They're laughing at you? Like those dominion over lust? That you had that dominion and then you open the door and then that, that, that giant is laughing at you. 
a weakness or over envy or jealousy or comparison or lies or in your mind. You once had a strong mind. You know exactly what God called you to do and that's the direction you were going in. But now the devil's just, you got all sorts of things and you feel like you are just getting played and you feel like you're just performing from prison. This was the strongest man to ever live. Now he's just a player in prison. That could happen to all of us. If, if the strongest man to ever live, could, if that could happen to him, he's much stronger than all of us. Same thing could happen to me and you. I feel God speaking to some people right now. In, in Ezekiel 37, there's a story, there's a, there's a true story. The, the prophet, God shows the prophet, he shows them this valley and it's a valley of dry bones. Look at, look at this. Look at verse 1 and 3. And the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and sat me in the midst of a valley and it was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. This many times can represent our life. This once strong army, this strong area of our life is now just dry bones. It's a defeated army. It's not just dead and dry. It's very dry. That area that was once so strong now is, is weak, fragile, frail. It's dead. Once victorious, now bones. And how many have felt that? And then God says, can you, can you go forward in God? And you're like, I don't, I don't know. Because my life is too dry. There's no life here. All I see is death. You ever been there? So how do we move forward? This is where many people face reality. And you're going to have to learn to overcome this in life. If you're going to mature in Christianity. Let's look secondly and finally at power from prayer. You know, it's hard to get a real good grip on Samson's life, right? He's just different. He's just an odd type of guy. He's just, he's just a bit, bit weird. You know, it's like, how do you really process his life? Is he a good guy or is he a bad guy? Is he someone you want to be like or is there someone you don't want to be like? It, it's hard to process. Is he a man of God or not? He did all these bad things with all these girls. The first words he ever spoke, ever recorded from Samson was, I found a girl. That's not, probably not the best first words you ever say. And here is this life, yet scripture after scripture after scripture, it says the spirit of the Lord fell upon him. The spirit of the Lord fell upon him. The spirit of the Lord fell upon him. It's almost unjust and unrighteous how much grace God gave Samson. Because you read his life, verse thir uh, chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16. He did very, he didn't do that much right. He was constantly disobeying God. God gives him so much grace. Now, think about that. God giving him so much grace. Remember, this is Old Testament God where we think he had no compassion and whatnot, right? Just remember Old Testament God where if you did one thing, that was like, you could die. But here it is, God even in the Old Testament showing compassion and kindness and mercy to this man. And if God can show compassion and mercy and grace to Samson, how much more can he show that to you and I today? That when we've fallen and we're away from God, God can still pour out his mercies to us. I want you to remember this. God doesn't choose perfect people. Just remember that. Because I, I struggle with Samson. How did he use him? And God's like, well, how did I use you, Dan? Oh, yeah, I get it now. Cool. <laughs> it's resolved. Because many times I need to be this, and I believe, but you can't be that. You, you can't be who you think you need to be. It's just not going to happen. And you think, oh, that's, I'm disqualified for the things of God. Absolutely not. God uses imperfect people. And thank God, he's so gracious that God sees past his mistakes and he wants to help him. I like this. This quote says, they were able to cut Samson's hair, but they couldn't cut off God's love and grace to Samson. They can cut off his power for a moment, but they can't cut off God's power to him. The grace of God continued despite his mistakes. And no matter where you're at tonight, maybe you think you're like Samson. I'm in prison. I'm powerless. I feel pathetic. I feel like I'm getting played. 
I, I, am, I am completely out of where God wants me to be. The good news is God can see past your mistakes and still use you. Do you know the best verse in the whole book about Samson, the book of Judges about Samson, is in verse 22 of our text. It says this, However, the hair of his head began to grow again after being shaven. The year there was a, there was a tough moment. It was, it was a scary time for him. At his lowest of complete weakness, yet the strength came again. You might be weak tonight and have lost all your strength. Can I tell you, just like Samson, your strength can come back again. It, that, that place that you felt that you once had strength, it can come back again. God can meet with you again. And God can give you more power than you had before. Because we know, we know the story in John 2 is, the, is where God, Jesus turned the water into wine. And people think, oh yeah, we must be able to drink wine. Just stupidity in the highest. The point of that story is that when you serve God, God saves the best for last. And no matter how many times you've fallen and stumbled, the best wine is at the end. And that's why those that make it, those that stay on, they say, this is better than it's ever been. Because the more you closer you get with God, the richer life gets and the more strength you get. You go through ups and downs, you go through moments, but God can bring strength back to feeble hands and to weak hands and to broken hearts. God made our hearts. He knows how to put them back together. Three things Samson did if you want to get your strength back. If you feel away from God, you want the strength of Samson. Number one, we see that Samson prayed. Verse 28, Samson called to the Lord and saying, Oh Lord, remember me, I pray. It's easy to feel forgotten, isn't it? It's easy to feel like, Oh God, do you remember me? Do you remember me, God? Remember, God, do you remember those times we had when we were close? And God's like, well, you never left my sight. Do you think God's eyes ever lost, left Samson? Do you think God was ever far away from Samson? Never. Not for a minute. Was Samson ever forsaken? There was never a moment in his life that he was forsaken. Can I tell you, there's never a moment in your life that you've been forsaken by God. God is watching every single moment, reaching out to you to give you strength again. God doesn't forget his children. And if his eye is on the sparrow, and if his eye is on Samson, his eye is on us. And he watches over us, and he's waiting for you to cry out to him. You want strength again? The first thing you need to do is cry out to God. Remember me, God, and God will remember you. Secondly, Samson was passionate. Samson called to the Lord in our text in verse 28. Oh, Lord, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once Oh God, he prayed, God, will you meet with me again? God, just one more time, will you meet with me again? God, will you bring me back to my new convert days? God, can you bring me back to the days where I was on fire for you? Will you meet with me again, God? Because Samson realizes he has nothing. Samson realizes he has no strength now. There is nothing in him that is good anymore. He is just a normal, average man a weak man. There is nothing he can do. But he says, God, would you just give me one more time? I wonder when he was praying this prayer, God, would you meet with me just one more time? I wonder if his mind was going back to the old times when he had strength. Remember, if he was reminiscing about the times where he just picked up the gates of the city and went for a walk. I wonder if he's thinking about the times where he got 300 foxes, lit their tails on fire, and let them set out through the Philistine arm, and he just demolished the Philistines. I wonder if he's thinking about the time where he got a jawbone of a donkey and killed a thousand men just in one day. I wonder if he's thinking of those times, oh, I remember God when you gave me strength. Oh, I remember when the lion attacked me and I just tore it apart because that was your strength, God. And he says, God, would you just meet with me again? And listen, church, if you're feeling weak, you can cry out to God and say, God, meet with me again. God, that strength that you once gave me, give it to me again. That anointing that was there once, God, give it to me again. Let, let me have that fire of the Holy Ghost let me have it again. You can get your passion back again if you just cry out to God for it. Second Corinthians, that's Chronicles, sorry, 2.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. God says, you cry out to me, I'll bring healing that you never thought possible. We sang that tonight. So number one, he prayed. Number two, he was passionate. But the third thing Samson did is that he pushed. 
Look at verse 29. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which support the Philistine, supported the temple and he braced himself against them, one on the right and the other on his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might. You know, underline that. He pushed with all his might and the temple fell on the lords and the people who were in it. You want God's power again? You just start pushing with all your might. Push with all your might. And God multiplies. Remember, he's a weak man. He has nothing. But when he pushes with all his might, God's hand gets involved and God's strength covers his strength. And he's able to pull de- tear down the temple pillars. James 4, 8, we know this. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You need to push. You need to push in your relationship with God. Like I spoke this morning, you need to be aggressive and chase down your destiny. You can get your strength back again. You can be in ministry again. You can be a soldier of Christ again. If you just push through, God is the God of second chances. You know, there's a man in the Bible by the name of John Mark. He's a relative of, 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 of Barnabas. We know Barnabas and, and, and Paul, they were together, but they had a breakup. They were a ministry team together, but they had a massive fallout. What happened is, previously, John Mark had betrayed them. And so they're going to go on this, this tour together, this missions trip. And, and Barnabas wants to bring his family along. He wants to bring John Mark. And, and Paul says, no, nah, last time he failed me. I don't want him. They have this big argument and they actually split up. It's like those verses in the Bible that you, don't, you wish weren't there. That Barnabas and, and, and Paul had a fight, an argument, and actually split up. You wish there was more humility there. But it just, that's just what happened. But at the end of Paul's life, he says something very interesting. He says this in 2 Timothy 4.11. This is the end of his life. He's an old man now. He says, only Luke is with me, but get Mark and bring him with me, with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. Here's a man that once betrayed him, turned against him. He even turned away from, from Barnabas because there was so much conflict. But at the end of his life, he says, you know what? That guy's useful. He's useful in the kingdom. And maybe you've felt like John Mark, I've let people down, I've turned away, I haven't been where I should have been. When the fight, when the going got tough, I got running instead of fighting. But here, Paul says, I bring that guy because the God's the God of second chances. I close with this. We spoke about Ezekiel 37, right? Spoke about how the valley of dry bones and that could be your life. Well, the story doesn't end with dry bones. Look at verse 7. It says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over and there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath, to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath and breathe on these slain that they may live. Breathe on those that are dead, those dead areas. Breathe on them that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and they lived, stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army. Because when you speak the word of God and you're passionate and when you push and when you pray, God can turn your dead area into an army. God can give you strength again. God can revolutionize your life. Samson, I I don't understand his life, but I do understand one thing. He ended very well. Look what it says in our final text. So the dead that he killed at his death were more than he killed in his life. Think about that. Everything, all the deaths that he had taken out the the enemy in one moment, all that he did, he did more in that one moment with God's power than ever in his whole life. That shows that God's into second chances that God wants to use you again more powerfully than the first time. Maybe you've made some mistakes. Maybe you feel like you're in prison. Maybe you're far away from where God wants you. Listen, my brother, my sister, it's all right. We can end well. It doesn't matter how you start. It matters how you finish. And with God, we can end well. Aren't you glad about that? Why don't we give God praise? Why don't we thank God for that? Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for your goodness, God, and your grace and your power, Lord. Thank you, my God. We honor you, Lord, and worship you, Jesus. Glory and power be unto our God who reigns forevermore. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, God, for your love and your compassions, Lord. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Hallelujah. All through this place, every head bowed, every eye closed. Quickly, there's people here, you're unsaved or backslidden. As I'm preaching this sermon,